Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the shop. Ting Ting here, Kind Line Forge. Uh, we're going to get into a little topic today about the YouTube channel, things that I want to do, as well as the first video that I'm going to be doing when implementing what we're going to discuss. Uh, what I'm doing with my channel, taking a step back, we're going to do like a bare bones, ground up rebuild of the channel. Um, it's been kind of sporadic because of late and hit or miss. And that's all changing now. Um, I have a plan that I've wrote down and taken several, I'd say weeks to fill this plan out and I wanna start putting it in motion now. And uh, the first thing I gotta do is get the shop the way I want it and start from there. And that is gonna lead into this video today. Um, it's gonna be called Make Your Shop Work For You. And that means a few different things. It doesn't just mean make it comfortable for you and how you want it to be. It also uh, set it up in a manner where it's conducive for productivity. It's make it as easy as possible for you to get your job done. Therefore, your shop is taking some of the stress off of you and essentially working for you. Essentially, this video is just gonna be things that I've learned in my process of starting my business as a blacksmith, getting my shop set up, and things that I've went through already in my time in the business that I think would help you. Um, kind of the hindsight's 2020 kind of deal. Um, I really think, because I didn't do everything perfect. I know I wasn't perfect. I didn't do anything close to perfect with my shop. I just got it set up for me how I could use it right away and get the ball rolling. But as I've been working and getting along with things, I've, there's several things that I want to change, several things I've learned, okay, that's probably not the best way to set that up, or several things I figured out, okay, this works really well, maybe some other folks could learn something from this, so basically this video is going to be what I've learned about how making your shop work for you. So without further ado, let's get into it, guys, and I hope that helps a little bit. All right, guys, first thing I really want to discuss on this is shop size and location. Um, we've all heard the term. It's never big enough. <laughs> the story of your life, right? <laughs> but it's the truth. When it comes to a shop, think about what size you need it. Double that right away. Because I promise you're going to need to expand. If you get serious about your hobby or you turn it into an income type situation, you're going to expand. You're going to take on new facets of that hobby and that craft where you're going to need more tools and more places to put stuff. So when you're planning for a shop, plan to expand plan to have room to add on to it and it's basically what I've done here what I did was I picked a location in my property to where I have plenty of room to add on as you see I've just got kind of the carport style shop out here hot shop free walls open wall in the back open gables up top wide open front it's it's perfect for expansion right now because as of it as it sits I can come to this side of it over here where the trailer is and the grill all this is going to get leveled out cleared this mulch pile will be moved i can add on to the side here okay and if you didn't notice my shop over there the inside shop is the exact same length of this shop so what i'm planning to do is bring that shop over here and set it beside this one butt it up put a doorway in there cold shop closed off insulated so i got air conditioned grinding room everything like that to where I can work comfortably when it's hot. Then I got the hot shop out here where I can do my forging hot work, you know, stuff that requires fire and proper ventilation and stuff like that, or smoke. So I did this essentially in a manner to where I could expand. I already knew I was gonna have to get bigger and I've got the shop to put here. I just gotta do it. It's work in progress, one man shop over here. So choose a place that you can put your shop on your property or wherever it may be that you have room to expand because I promise you folks, expansion is going to happen. Now, 
the first duh moment for Ting Ting and things that I've learned about setting up your shop is the orientation of it, the direction you face it. You want to work with the sun, okay? Sun rises in the east, sets in the west. You want to put it in a position to where if you've got shade trees, you can block that afternoon sun with the shade if you have that ability. See, I've already got an eye closed here because it's bright over there. The sun rises that way, comes this way. I don't have my sunglasses on. But anyways, if you can set it up in a manner where you're going to have some afternoon shade on it, that's going to be ideal to keeping your shop cool. Um, it really, really, really helps with that. Um, the thing that I screwed up on with my shop orientation is the direction of the winds. In the summertime, the wind's coming out of the east, or out of the west. It goes west to east. And in the wintertime, they go north to south here. Well, I set my shop up ass backwards for that. Uh, not thinking about it. Like I said, I learned from it, and I'd like to change it. And it's not having to move my shop. I can just change where the openings are. But I set it up to have this uh, opening back here so I can get some air through here. And it lets air through fine. It ventilates the shop. It's perfect. Except that's the north side of my shop right there. In the wintertime, it's cold as hell because the wind's coming through that opening. I should have oriented that opening to where it's on my sides here. That way in the wintertime, that solid wall is blocking that wind coming through here like a tunnel. And these sides right here would be open in the summer with windows like that so the wind can blow through the shop and cool me off. So that's something I'm definitely going to fix and maybe my mistake will help you stop from making the same mistakes. So take in consideration where your shop is located on your property as far as this travel of the sun, the orientation of it, how your airflow is going to come through your shop. Because let me tell you something, folks. Blacksmith is hot. I'm sure you all are aware of that. And the ones that aren't into it yet are just trying to get into it. It's a very, very hot craft. And uh, you're going to want airflow, I promise you. Even if you've got fans and everything, it's just conducive to pull air through and it's natural flow. It helps ventilate and push the air that much easier. So take that into consideration, unlike I did, because <laughs> it could help. All right, the second part of this video is shop layout. You want to lay your shop out in a manner in which it's easy for you to work in, easy for you to get around. You're not struggling to get a job done. Uh, everything just flows smoothly. Uh, that's the, the, the hardest part about production if your area is not set up to do things that you do in a production manner, you're not going to be very fast at it. Now, if you see my vice, this, this is a, like a tool table. Okay, this isn't really a work surface, it's a tool table to set the tools on that I use often. Uh, whenever I get into a project, I like to have my punches ready, hammer, uh, a file, good rasp. Normally, I keep this here because I do all my torch work at this vice, so this is on here somewhere. I mean, it's not clean. I'm not trying to say it's the most tidy place in, in the world by any means, but it's definitely conducive for how I work. It's big enough to hold files, hammers, and everything that I need all in one spot without me having to set this down and walk to here or walk over here and get something I can gather everything up, set it right here on this table on the back of my vise, and I'm good to go. Okay, and down here, I've got, you know, the journeyman spikes and all that and all the smiths that's worked in my shop and this wooden post that's a great place to put that and the table also stops me from getting too close to the posts where i will not hit my legs on those spikes down there so all in all the spikes is set up to be conducive for my work methods okay the next point of layout is going to be distances how far apart everything is in your shop um, it's always best from what i was taught through readings, through talking to uh, other smiths that have been doing this for a living for a long time, and through my own experience, it's best to have everything like a two-step, one to two steps uh, space from your centerpiece. And my anvil obviously is my centerpiece, it's a blacksmith shop. So everything that I've got is, you know, if I'm stand, if I'm at my anvil, working around my anvil, you know, and I want to go to my forge over here. I'm, one step here and I'm getting stuff out of my forge. One step back to my anvil, boom. Okay, if I want to go from my forge to my vise, one, two, okay, and I'm at my vise. That's how you want it. If I'm at my forge, I come out of my forge and go to my press, one, and I'm here. I'm working, okay? It's it's very conductive or conducive to your work space to have everything at a full pace, a stride. You don't want um, half strides. 
half steps. Things start, you get hurt. A half a stride, you end up running into stuff. You're not expecting it to be there. You come up short, you stub your toe on it. It's dangerous. You could hit corners and things like that because you, your body's not used to taking half steps. Your body is muscle memory, you take full steps. So set your shop up in that manner so you're not banging into stuff. That's, that hurts. You work with steel, most of the stuff in here is steel. Steel to the shin, steel to the knee, uh, a sharp point to the thigh, very dangerous, you know. That's also another reason why they blunted their tips on their ambles. Most ambles you see don't have a sharp point. You know, they come from the factory like that with a sharp point, but they don't have them now more often than not if they've been used because the smith has taken and dinged it in. He's blunted it to prevent, because let me tell you something, that's right it's for more artery, that point right there give or take inch to two. Who wants to be that close, right? You turn not expecting that sharp point there even stab you, uh, puncture your artery, be bad. Okay, so those are things to take into consideration to set your shop up. The paces and how far your steps are between everything, very important relative to your safety and your work production. So try to put that into the forefront of your mind when you're setting it up. Make the spaces your own, but then make them at a distance to where it's comfortable for you to work and you're not hurting yourself, you know. And that also plays into the shop size. Pick a size of your shop if you're going to do one, if you're planning, to where if you know you're going to have an anvil, a vice, a forge, a striking anvil, a rack. Pick a, a shop size that you can draw out on paper and then, you know, scale it down and place everything in a manner to which it's comfortable for you to work, but you've got enough room around everything. The next point of that is going to be horizontal spaces. I know you see uh, that's a horizontal space there. Um, this could be considered a horizontal space because I can lay stuff on it. The point of the horizontal space comment is as few horizontal spaces you can get away with, the better. Okay? I've got this rack here. It's hollow so I can hang stuff through it. So I can put a whole lot more on this thing than what I normally would if I was just laying it flat. Or this rack over here, I can hang instead of laying it down, that takes up a whole lot less space standing it up in there. Then instead of laying that down, sit it down in there. Basically, you want to remove as many horizontal spaces from your shop as possible because it's very easy for you to just turn around and just lay something down and then do something else and then you turn and you lay something else down. Before you know it, you have no room to work. Every, every surface you have is covered with crap and you're like, man, it's going to take me a week to clean this. So remove horizontal spaces from your shop is all, if at all possible. It will help you keep from cluttering your workspace up tremendously. The next point is going to be make the shop your own. Um, yeah, it's got to be a workplace, but it's got to be a fun workplace to enjoy because I feel like if you enjoy your work, you won't work at all. You'll just have fun. And what I mean by shop, make it your own, add some style to it. You know, you see around my shop, I've got little things sitting around. It's funny, makes you smile when you look at it. Those are the wheelies made by Robert Robinette. He sent me a pair of them up there in that corner there. I've got a Moabo from Yamez there and one there and I had a couple big ones up there on each side of that but I took them down to show them I haven't set them back up there yet but uh, they the one of them's mine it's made out of copper and the other one they're right here actually guys uh, this is the copper one that we all had a hand in making it to hammer in here at my house in March when the quad squad came over and you might recognize this this is the Mwaba that Roy made no, Yamez did not let me keep this. This is an adoption or a foster situation. He let me hold on to it and hang it up on the wall. And it is coming back with me to Quad State this year to go to someone else to hang out. It's going to be the traveling Moabo. So it's pretty damn awesome. It's really heavy, so I'm tired of holding it already. But yeah, make it your own. Add some style to your shop. And for those that really know me, I'm a true blue red bone american my shop ain't complete without an american flag so i made that my own for sure <laughs> but make it fun make it enjoyable i've got a lot more stuff to decorate this shop with once i get it laid out because i'm sure i'm gonna be moving stuff around because like i said this is going to be a complete bare bones restructuring of the shop space the channel and everything because I really want to make a solid run at this to make this my lifelong profession all right last point clean 
you got to clean guys as much as we hate it um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys my indoor shop and this is two weeks of work without cleaning and I'm an idiot for not cleaning but like I said I get it over my head sometimes and I'm rushing so much that I ain't got time to clean but that stops now I'm caught up on orders for I've got two orders left to get out but other than that I'm caught up so I got at least a three-week buffer period here so this best time as any to do this the revamp on everything okay I'm gonna show you now what it looks like in my shop and why I'm telling you this and there it is look at that workbench terrible terrible okay this is not good for productivity this uh, is clutter um, you've got to stop and clean okay I've got a lot of work done in the last two weeks on these benches and why they look like this but at the end of the day I need to stop and clean up and that's kind of the downfall of getting it over your head when you got so much going on that you spend every hour working and not any of the cleaning your shop turns into this and that okay there's cut offs and drops things like that cut steel uh belts need to be reorganized cleaned up swept floors uh grinder dust needs to be taken care of holy shit <laughs> i don't even want to get into that horizontal space is galore in here but it is an indoor shop where all the you know intricate work gets done as far as needing a workbench to fit things up done a lot of leather work lately so you see my granite pieces out right there um yeah clean your shop up a clean shop is a happy shop and when it's clean you get more work done so as you can see i've got some work to do i've got a shop to clean that's what's happening today we finally got a break in this god awful heat uh whatever the lord was baking i think he forgot to set a timer and it's overdone but we finally got a break we're below 90 degrees today and uh it's a perfect time for me to get the shop cleaned out so that's what i'll be doing now is cleaning my shop because it's always nice to come into a clean shop and know exactly where to grab the tool from you know where it's at because it's where it's supposed to be and there's no muss no fuss okay so again thank you guys for watching i really appreciate it i look forward to the new outlook on this channel that i've got i look forward to putting it into play for you guys and i hope you guys are going to enjoy it as well because we're coming from the ground up on this and we're going to try and really uh put a lot of focus into this youtube channel now guys uh so thank you for the support up this point i want to say thank you to all my patreons you guys are very instrumental in what i'm able to do here at my shop um, every little bit helps guys if you're interested in hitting the patreon up it's uh, patreon.com slash countylineforge. I will leave a link up here at the end of the video. You can go to uh, as little as a dollar a month when I do builds and stuff like that. Um, I've already got a couple on there. You get a link to private videos or unlisted videos um, that have measurements and all that stuff. Uh, I'm going to try that route and see if I can get support on Patreon to help boost the finances of the shop. Uh, I don't want to go the route of selling PDFs. Uh, because I'm not too good at making them, <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you. I think I could go the route of making the video and laying everything out and giving a step-by-step -step video instruction on, on making it and put that on there for you to access anytime you want if you're a paid member of my Patreon. Um, so just a different spin on trying to get some of the stuff I make and the parameters out to you guys. Uh, if I make a sword, you're going to see the in-depth measurements instead of just the forging of it like I'm going to show on YouTube. You're going to actually see... Uh, my thought process is behind it, the measurements, how I got my steel, where I got my steel from, uh, how I got it to the shape and to the size, how how I calculated how much steel I'm going to need to do that with, how I weigh out my hammer billets. Uh, all that information will be on the videos when I make a video for my Patreon folks. So if you want to hit the Patreon, hit this link up above. It'll take you over there. You can check it out. A little as a dollar a month gets you involved in that. And there's other perks in there too. So just go check it out, guys. I really do implore you to do that. Uh, make sure you're following me on Facebook and Instagram at County Line Forge. Um, a lot of cool stuff gets posted there that doesn't make it to the YouTube channel that if you don't follow there, you miss it. Some of you are scratching your heads like, when the hell did you make that? Because I show it on my live stream. They're like, well, if you follow me on Facebook and Instagram, you'd see when I made that. Um, it's hard to bust out the camera every time I'm working. So follow me on those platforms, folks. And uh, again, thanks for watching. Really appreciate the support. We're going to catch you later. I got some work to do. Clean up, clean up, everybody cleans up. Yeah, I hate cleaning. Later, guys.